And as well as the beginning. Uh, even if there was no clear push yesterday, we are beginning now. We are going forward. This is the direction that we are taking. You could say Partridge is informed by many things. By what we are seeing in the region, by what we are seeing at the global level, and by what we see as best for our people. Digital, digitalization is something that has been in the scene for quite some, some time. But if I can remember, there has been one global setting where it was really emphasized, and that was in 2018. Uh, it was called uh, Bali, Bali Big Tech uh, uh, Agenda. Agenda. It was at the global financial institution level uh, during one of their, their annual meetings. And it was emphasized that this is the direction that would be good for the global community. Now, different regions, different countries, different continents move at different pace. At home here, yes, we are guided by what we see in the EAC and the AU. But we are also not a continent isolated. We are a continent also connected with the global community. And the global community is moving toward providing services in an efficient manner. And financial services that are digitally provided can leave the trail, trail that can have the record, that can have, that can assist accountability, that can do so many things. And that can also reduce cost uh, for the customer. So in, in our situation, uh, the bank has said, since 2017, there has been a regulation, uh, uh, regulation that was uh, approved by the World of Bank of South Sudan, and that has been implemented. But, but, at, but at the moment, it's what we are building on, uh, in line with what we also see uh, in the region. Why do we think it is imperative now to move less and less away from cash to work more to work cashless society? It's because of the reason that I provided earlier. When you carry more cash, there are risks that are associated with, with it. It is less convenient and it is also expensive. But with a click, just away from your computer or from your telephone, you can always send money from point A to point B or from person A to person B. So we would believe there's a benefit here. In terms of the constraint that arise from our people, illiteracy, for example, and the thing that I've said earlier, these are issues that have been there. Can we just close our hands and call them and give up? No. We try and find a way to, res to, to resolve those. For the few that are not digitally connected, we encourage them to do so. But for those who have the means to do so today, they should, uh, they should start. What was your other question? Okay. In terms of protection, we have the, K the KYC. Uh, we have the KYC, we have the anti money laundering group, we have the consumer protection, we have all this protection even in, the, this, in this regulation 2017 that the Bank of South Sudan has. And each of the commercial banks that are here have those. They even teach them and share them with, with, with their customers. If something egregious is done, we have the laws of the land that are there. So the consumers are protected. There's no fear to move to a digital world. Because I have said earlier there's a trail left behind by digital tra transaction. So cheating an individual, whether the mobile money operators or the commercial bank, cannot do that to a client. And if it were to happen, like anywhere in the world, we have the laws in the book. That, that can be used to execute, but our, our people should not fear. This is the future. Moving countries like this is the future. We know that all, all over the world, this is the global standard now. Uh, $10,000 is the maximum that anyone can carry across the international borders. So this is the global standard that we, are, that we have in our book, that we have embraced, that we have accepted as a, a people. So that's what we have. If you go to Uganda, you go anywhere you go, you have 10, of course, if it is 10, you must declare it uh, so that the customs official know that this is how much you are carrying. But I think you, even if it's 10 cents on top, then you are in violation of that. It is, could be a national, a regional, and international uh, standard, $10,000. Now, if there are people that are crossing the borders and they are being charged, there's nothing like that from the government of South Sudan or even from the government itself. I would suspect those who are doing it are doing it out of their own pollution. It's, it's, it's not a thing that is 
that is uh, in those. Because why will you charge? Is there a service that they are provided to you? You are just carrying your money in your hand, legally carrying it. All you need to know is that, is it, is it much? Is it too much? If it is too much, then the question is, what are you doing with it? Why do you want to carry it? Well, if it is too much, why don't you transfer it through the banking system? So that's the mean. So first, we have no policy like that to take anybody's money at the border. And second, this is the global standard that $10,000 is the maximum that you can carry. But you have to declare it to the custom officials wherever you go. In terms of uh, timeline, I will not be too exact, but I will just be, I will give appro approximate uh, dates. What I can say is that the work on the national payment system is in a advanced stage. Uh, I'm, told, I'm told by my technical team that we are close to 80 or 90 percent completion point, but you can take that with a grain of salt. And uh, what the team has, for those who do not know, the Bank of South Sudan is working with other institutions, such as uh, we have support and funding uh, from African Development, East African Community, and an implementer in Canada called uh, Motran. These are all the three partners that are working with us to bring on board the national payment system. And at the moment, the work is in a advanced stage. Uh, I believe that there is a, a sense that we would go somewhere live by November, but that remains subject to a number of uh, things that, that we are working on. But that, that will give you a uh, hope and indication that we are working on, on the national payment system. So we believe, yes, once it's done, that these, these are the ingredients, such as the RTGS and whatever you would instant uh, transfers, all these things will, will be in place. So this is also a policy issue that the entire government is very much interested in. And the Bank of South Sudan, with our partners, uh, is working very hard. So I encourage all of you to, to seek, to provide opinions, and to our national payment uh, system team. I believe Dengaru is here, or his team. Let me just say that, yes, there's a work on national payment system, and this progress will be very, very well. Cash cannot be entirely eliminated in any economy, because I believe in court, there are some people who think that if they don't have cash in their hand, they have no money. But we must disabuse them to say cash doesn't have to be physical cash. It can be in your computer, it can be in your phone, it can be any other platform, or even in the cloud and it's still cash. You can still use it as a means of a pay payment. As a result, while we'll continue to use cash, we're encouraging our people to move to a situation where a lot of transactions take place online. Bank account to bank account, checks, mobile money, and across the board. This 10 million SSP limit must start to be imposed as of yesterday or today. Of course, as we move online and there are other innovations that come on board, the bank always remains open to exchange views and see what is good for the, for the industry and the country as a whole. So our, our plea and request is for the commercial bank to do everything to reach out to those who are not bank so that they create accounts and make it easy for, 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 for them. To the mobile money operators, you do the same thing. Reach out, I said earlier, we can start tomorrow. Some can start doing the road shows in Yai, others are doing it in Awil, in Malakal, in Okobo, and Pibor. All the borders, all the corridors, all the administrative units of South Sudan must have financial services. So go out there and do a road show about what you can offer to the people. If there are areas where there, there are where there are challenges, you uh, innovate. You don't have power, maybe put up solar. You have insecurity, the government will be there to support. So let us all go out, pulling, pulling, doing, doing, doing this, and then to the people, to our, to our people, it is also also a challenge for you. 
that the financial institution, all of all of them, seated here, represented by the uh, uh, MDs, are willing to do everything to ensure that those who do not have bank accounts do have bank accounts. Those who have bank accounts are able to use them so that we achieve economies of scale that we can reduce reduce costs and make services uh, easy. For one or two things that I said we must begin to talk about, where we need to reach across other institutions, like the issue of interoperability, I encourage all of you to sit with the relevant in institution. Regarding the other limits that, that we have not talked about, the banking uh, solution will come on board. Here I would have to say that let us work together. Let us collaborate so that you can achieve your bottom line as an institution, so that we can achieve our bottom line, which is providing services to our people and, and improving the banking sector. Because of the, of the day, the banking system provides finance with least the will of growth and development. With this, I thank you very, very much.